manifestation works, why aren't I with Keanu Reeves? You sent Keanu Reeves a copy of the book. Did you hear anything Well, about? I don't think I did. Well, it was a publisher's, and yeah. I think they thought I was joking. I'm going to dive straight in and ask what the weirdest thing you did for love and attention as a kid was. I don't know. What do you think, having read the book, is the weirdest thing I did? I don't know if this was for attention, but I'm going to say when you had uh, hosted a party in your bedroom. Mm. Um, I can't remember how old that you were. That was for the attention of one boy called yeah. The Apprentice. But I it was, was like a, a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. I'd seen the American films where you get together with a boy uh, at the party. But I was about 11 and my mum just let me have a party in my bedroom. And the catering was one bag of ta- tangy toms for 10p. And how many was that to feed? Uh, about six or seven, and <laughs> there was just wa- like glasses of water. There was one tape, cassette tape. That's all I am. And impressed, we we were waiting. There was one good song on the. It was a Weetabix cassette tape that we got free because we ate enough Weetabix, and we were ready to press play on the tape when Craig walked in, me and my friend Vicky, and then people had bought me presents. And I sort of would look at the present thinking, that's about a fiver's worth. And then I'd look in the room thinking, that's not a fiver's worth of party. But uh, yeah, that, and, and then Craig Prentice um, asked my friend Vicky out. So it, it did backfire. Yeah. yeah. And now you're thinking, <laughs> with all those tangy toms. <laughs> <laughs> and so you moved out when you were 15. Yeah. What was it about the situation that meant that you needed to leave? My stepdad was weirdly just lying about me and stuff, and I didn't, and it was just a bit of a head screw. So um, I just thought I should be independent. Yeah. And I knew how to cook good noodles, so that was quite good. And uh, off, I went, off I went around the corner. It was only up the road, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was nice to get out, really. They thought it was because I wanted to drink into oblivion. Well, I did do that as well, actually, <laughs> but I could do that at home, so. Yeah. Do you remember your first taste of alcohol? Yeah, it was um, at Vicky Baker's house. And uh, I remember it going down my throat and feeling very warm. And it was like, it was quite a shock, but it was a nice shock. It was like, and then it was like, hmm, that feels interesting. I think I'll revisit that. But I did leave it a little bit. So that was 11, and then I left it a couple of years before I got the opportunity again. <laughs> and when you realise alcohol had become a problem... Mm. Why at that point was it so hard to stop? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, addiction, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, it's so Moorish when you're in it. Um, what sort of problems was it causing when you did eventually say, right, I'm stopping? And the final time I stopped, I'd embarrassed myself so much. I was like, oh, I have to stop now. I'd done so many things and I couldn't have a career, I think, and drink. Mm. Um, yeah, because I was an absolute goose and... I behaved very badly on a ski trip. I love snowboarding. And I went snowboarding for work, like, and did a comedy gig. And I was I was with a load of alcoholics, I'd say, a load of pissheads. And I was the one that was a problem. And I was like, oh, God. Um, didn't get paid for the trip. I said, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough, I'll leave early. And that was the last time. Because it's all the things I love, like comedy, career, snowboarding, and I was obliterating everything. So, yeah. Mm. And how did you first get into stand-up? Well, I, I did a book reading the other day, well, not the other day, ages ago, in, and my ex, one of my ex-boyfriends came who was in the book. He was the one that snapped his banjo string. And he, um, I'm sure he's got other sort of things that he did. But um, <laughs> so he, and I spoke to him afterwards, and he said when I was drunk, so I would have been like 18, 19, I would always say that I wanted to do stand-up. I was like, really? Because I didn't remember that at all. So I guess I always wanted to, but then didn't pluck up the courage until I was like 26 or something. And then just went to like a course, like a six-week course, and you write your first five minutes. How did they go down, those first five minutes? First five, I was like, it's easy. (laughs) And then uh, second five, died in my hole. I was like, ah, it's trickier than I thought. (laughs) And I wasn't very good at first, because I think I was, yeah, I was in my head a lot, and I wasn't very confident. And I was placing too much importance on it as well. Mm. And what's it like now when you've written a set and you're going out and you're performing it and you're enjoying it, but then something in your life changes and then the set 
is kind of now talking about something that isn't happening in your life and you're still having to go on and perform it. Change the set, change the set, or don't gig. <laughs> really? Change the set. Yeah, uh, like, don't... I, I gigged with this one guy and he was talking about his kids being two and I was looking at him thinking, he started late in life. And I said, oh, is your kids... How old's your kid now? And he went, oh, 21. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you've got to stop. You've got to stop using that material, surely. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher was in power when that material was... Fresh, probably. I, I don't know. <laughs> One of the things you wrote was that you listened to... I can't remember how you said it, so sorry if I'm exaggerating. No, no, okay. Almost all of the positivity audiobooks. <laughs> oh, I did listen to a lot of... Uh, yeah, I did listen and read a lot of stuff because I was very, very negative. Mm -hmm. And I still have moments where I sort of go into that where I'm like a little bitch about stuff. Where, and I've got a nice life, so I shouldn't be. But um, yeah, I used to be so, so negative and had to like reprogram my mind people get so sensitive there about that sort of stuff i wrote an article for the guardian about that about like uh this is like the moment that changed me and my friend jules uh was like i can't hang out with you because you're so negative and i was like oh no and it was i was really young like 25 or something and that was a, like a light bulb moment and that's when i went on a path of like right i've got have to change my neuro pathways because it's just habit yeah. Um, and then underneath the article, people are like, oh, nice try trying to get me into your cult. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. But people like don't want to change. Mm. Um, of the positive audiobooks that you've listened to or yeah. books that you've read, for the people who do want to change, do you have one where you're like, yeah, yeah, get stuck in with that? Yes, you negative little Nigels. You get, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, one that I, I say about a lot actually, Richard Wiseman, The Luck Factor because he is a social scientist, so he's not woo-woo, so it's like a nice gateway drug into <laughs> that sort of stuff. And I had him on my podcast, actually, and he's a really interesting guy, and he was saying, it's not it's not like woo-woo, there's a science to it. The people that are looking for opportunity will, surprise, surprise, get opportunity. And yeah. the people that are going around going, it's not my fault, just my bad luck, will get more bad luck because it's their lens on the world, you know? I feel like that feels like part of manifesting, where manifesting is almost like... Cause you... Yes and no. It's like, I don't really agree with manifesting. Like, with, with comedy, I couldn't have manifested comedy goals without working on my, like, self-esteem and, mm. um, like, like confidence, basically. So I had to do that sort of work myself. And if I'd just been like, I'm going to manifest the Apollo or whatever, it's like, no, you're not ready and you don't <laughs> believe in yourself. So it's that sort of stuff where you have to, like, dig a bit deeper and not be, like sort of wafting a crystal in the full moon. So I'm not completely woo-woo. I'm, I'm mm. they're quite practical. Yeah. If manifestation works, why aren't I with Keanu Reeves? I know. Ask us some question. Question. You sent Keanu Reeves a copy of the book. Did you hear anything Well, like I that? don't think I did. Well, it was a publisher's, and yeah. I think they thought I was joking. So, oh. I was like, so I was like, can we get a Keanu a copy to his management? And they were like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and then I haven't had back, so I'm assuming that he's not got a copy. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd be weird, right? Anyone, he, anyone else it went to? Otherwise he'd turn it into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and that'd be in a movie. <laughs> would you play yourself though? Would you yeah, play cute? myself in a movie. Yeah. Would you? Uh, little to big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get down on my knees and, uh, yeah. I mean, this question's going to come a bit out of left field, mm. but um, I wondered why that you wanted to devote time in the book to talk about big labia. Ah, Thank you. Um, <laughs> big farmer, big lady. So this is They're exactly two, what my husband said. To me. <laughs> the two big passions of my life are big farmer, big lady. And um, I just think that porn has ruined quite a lot of stuff. Mm. And um, labiaplasties are kind of massively on the up for young girls and they're actually quite dangerous operations just to tuck it all in when it doesn't need to be and it's just because porn's like I said it's one way and um, so I'm just sort of like celebrating the larger labias have I got a larger labia? I couldn't say <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say either I couldn't say but um, <laughs> no. and I feel like forever now I'll think of big labia and think of big pharma and in the book there's lots of kind of you know, we get the whole roller coaster of of Lou's life, and you've had to narrate that for audio. Yeah, yeah. So, what was that roller coaster like? I only cried once, or maybe twice. Um, and they lovely in the audio team. They were so nice, but they're about like twenty six, twenty seven, and I just thought how embarrassing. Like, you know, they're just they're very good at their job actually, but you know, and I just thought they've just got a woman crying next door. But they were lovely. <laughs> 
That that's not bad too little. No, to and also I feel like from talking to lots of people about their audiobooks. Yeah. Audio engineers at this point must be some of like they must see some of the most tears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out of like I mean many professions. Yeah. <laughs> How were you feeling about friends and family reading it? Well, initially very scared, but um then I thought, well, they can write a book if they want to write a book. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I've been kind and I feel like I've been sensitive and beyond that you know you can't I I just think in this world we're all going around whitewashing everything like whitewashing our past in case we get cancelled whitewashing everyone else's past in case they get upset and the book is trying to say that we've all made mistakes I talk about my mistakes like a lot you know and I forgive myself for them and I forgive other people for what I'm saying is is their mistakes but I've tried not to point the finger but everyone just wants you to write a book about how they're the the best thing ever and it's like are you joking me aren't you (laughs) joking me I'm not saying that about myself I'm certainly not saying it about you but yeah. then it's like this whole that's the thing about shame it's like we all need to step up and say yeah I did that then I'm not that person now and I'm sorry you know and loads of stuff I've done I wouldn't do now mm. but we don't learn if we sort of brush it all under the carpet and be like no I'm perfect and my mum and dad are perfect too it's stupid yeah yeah and what sort of feedback have you had now the book's out in the world um, favourite book, lovely book. <laughs> uh, no, a lot of women actually have contacted me saying it made them feel better about their lives and they made them feel better about the past and that was really, really nice. I really like that. So a lot of men as well, but um, yeah, when the women sort of say stuff about... Yeah, I think that's really, I think that's really nice. The feedback from some of the ladies has been so nice. Mm. And where did the title come from? What's that lady doing? Was that a specific moment? I was struggling to find a title that they liked, that I liked, and then my agent said, call it What's That Lady Doing, which was a show I did about six years ago, mm-hmm. which sort of, um, I, does, I do think, encapsulates. Um, and actually, my friend, you won't believe this, but my friend's got twins, you will believe that bit, <laughs> and she got the book through, and her one of her kids went, What's That Lady Doing? Can you believe that? Because I'm there with a seagull in the front, and they actually said they couldn't, they can't read. Okay. I forgot to tell you Got that. Sorry. <laughs> I was like thinking they yeah. probably couldn't read. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I forgot to say they couldn't read. Yeah, so that's interesting. Actually. So the cover's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and what's that lady doing now? What What's your um, focus? Dancing on ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a bit of that. I'm doing that move, and then. Um, <laughs> So we're training at the moment, and then 14th of January it goes live. And it's very scary, but I love it. I love it so much. But it's so fun. It's so, so fun. I'm quite scared, but just because it's such a fast one, the first dance is really, really fast. Mm. And I'm not a natural dancer. So it's all like you've got to, like, present. Are you a natural ice skater? Um, I chuck myself around. Uh I've got a lot of power, they're saying. As in, I can get around fast, but it does look like... What did I say to Brenda? I said the other day, I said it looks like a pig going down a slide. Um, (laughs) But then we agreed you'd watch that, you know? 100%. Would you vote for it? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) 